Right now, we're actually going to have our own Molly Canute come up today. I'm sure many of you know her, and if you do not, then you should, because she's fabulous. Um, she is going to be doing a reading from Greta Christina's Comforting Thoughts About Death that have nothing to do with God. So let's give her a warm welcome. Here's the thing. I think it's possible to be an atheist or an agnostic or to have religious or spiritual beliefs that you don't have certainty about and still feel okay about death. I think there are ways to look at death ways to experience the death of other people and to contemplate our own that allow us to feel the value of life without denying the finality of death. I can't make myself believe in things I don't actually believe, heaven or reincarnation or a greater divine plan for our lives, simply because believing those things would make death easier to accept. And I don't think I have to, or that anyone has to. I think there are ways to think about death that are comforting, that give peace and solace, that allow our lives to have meaning and even give us more than that, that meaning, and that have nothing whatsoever to do with any kind of God or any kind of afterlife. Here's the first thing. The first thing is time and the fact that we live in it. Our existence and experience are dependent on the passing of time and on change. No, not dependent. Dependent is too weak a word. Time and change are integral to who we are, the foundation of our consciousness and its warp and weft as well. I can't imagine what it would mean to be conscious without passing through time and being aware of it. There may be some form of existence outside of time, some plane of being in which change and the passage of time are an illusion, but it certainly isn't ours. And inherent to change is loss. The passing of time has loss and death woven into it. Each new moment kills the moment before it, and its own death is implied in the moment that comes after. There is no way to exist in the world of change without accepting loss, if only the loss of a moment in time. The way the sky looks right now, the motion of the air, the number of birds in the tree outside your window, the temperature, the placement of your body, the position of the people in the street, it's inherent in the nature of having moments. You never get to have this exact one again. And a good thing too, because all the things that give joy and meaning, music, conversation, eating, dancing, playing with children, reading, thinking, making love, all of it are based on time passing and on change and on the loss of an infinitude of moments passing through us and then behind us. Without loss and death, we don't get to have existence. We don't get to have Shakespeare or sex or five spice chicken without allowing their existence and our experience of them to come into being and then pass on. We don't get to listen to Louis Armstrong without letting the E-flat disappear and then turn to a G. We don't get to watch Groundhog Day without letting each frame of it pass in front of us for a 24th of a second and then move on. We don't get to walk in the forest without passing by each tree and letting it fall behind us. We don't get to stand still in the forest and gaze at one tree for hours without seeing the wind blow off a leaf a bird break off a twig for its nest, the clouds moving behind it, each manifestation of the tree dying and a new one taking its place. And we wouldn't want to have it if we could. The alternative would be time frozen, a single frame of the film with nothing to precede it and nothing to come after. I don't think any of us would want that. And if we don't want that, if instead we want the world to change, the world of music and talking and sex and whatnot, and let it be worth our while to accept, and even love, the loss and the death that make it possible.